Okay, let's start with the uh, first round of introduction. I just would like to know from you uh, where are you from, your name, and uh, what is uh, the subject of your bachelor, so I can understand uh, what is your background, basically. And then I'll introduce myself, but I propose to start with you, so let's start with you. Yasman uh, Shifani from Iran. Iran. I'm my ambassador for civil engineering. Civil engineering, okay, good. I'm Pepao from Italy. And I study civil and environmental engineering. Iran, Iran. okay. My name is Sam Lazar. I study construction and civil engineering and in general. In general, okay. And you are from? Lebanon. Lebanon, okay, I'm totally good. I'm Francesco Lavicchia, I studied engineering uh, in Bali. In Bali, okay, good. Uh, I'm Ashton Khan, uh, I'm from Pakistan and uh, my bachelor is in civil uh, engineering. Okay. I'm Elisa Kayapa, I'm studying uh, I studied, uh, civil engineering in Milan. In Milan, okay, okay. I'm Andrea Piglioni, I studied uh, civil and environmental engineering in uh, Polytechnico di Bari. Bari, okay, good. And uh, you mentioned that probably three more people will attend, okay? And uh, so you attended, uh, probably not all of you, can you please confirm with me if you attended ocean, if, sorry, ocean engineering with Professor Archetti? Everybody? No? Uh, me, I didn't. You didn't? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And, uh, but now we are attending coastal engineering with yeah. Professor Archetti. Yeah, she's teaching now, correct, on Tuesday. Yeah, but she's teaching for only 16 hours, correct? Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so now it's time to introduce myself. Hello, as you know, my name is uh, Alberto, Alberto Montanari, and my uh, background is uh, actually civil engineering with, uh, um, let's say, I focused on hydraulic engineering. It was basically fluid mechanics uh, and hydraulic works uh, at that time. I graduated in Parma. I am from Reggio Emilia. Reggio Emilia is a city in the same region as Ravenna. It's located between Bologna and Milan, more or less. I travel every day. I'm still a commuter. And my, my study, when, when I took my degree, it was a five-year cycle. So it was not three plus two because in Italy we changed around 2002-03. And I graduated in 1992. So basically it was a five-year cycle in, in Parma. And then uh, in Parma I had the opportunity to work on a master degree thesis. We didn't call it master degree, but anyway, it was equivalent. On river water quality with some professors from the Polytechnic of Milan. And then my advisor, thesis advisor, asked me whether I wanted to take a PhD, which was really uncommon at that time. Because uh, at that time, it was like 25 years ago, uh, it was uh, the degree in engineering in Italy uh, offered a lot of job opportunities, well paid also. And uh, the PhD, conversely, was something that was not clear the meaning uh, and uh, was not really clear because you have to think that in Italy the PhD programs started in 1988. So after four years, I was asked to take a PhD, it was not clear to us what a PhD was. And uh, it was not clear what kind of job opportunities besides uh, those offered by a degree in engineering the PhD could offer. But, uh, you know, for some reason I decided to, to let it go. And the main reason was that uh, when I took my degree, I was still, still fascinated by studying. So I said, why not? And I, I enjoyed it, and let's continue. And, but it was not my intention to take a career in the academia, because uh, I thought that I was not prepared enough. Because, you know, and I, I took a degree with Laude, but still, uh, the study was not my first priority at that time, so I also had to try to earn some money because my family was not really a rich family, let's say. So it was not my first priority in the academia, but I decided to let it go. And uh, also, I was very motivated to work in the, in the region where I was born and I grew up, which is this region. And now it's a different story, but uh, uh, at that time I had this feeling. So I went anyway in Milan. And then, uh, after uh, ending my PhD, I was offered a scholarship at the University of Bologna. And uh, so I thought that it was very good, because Bologna was in the same region where I wanted to live. And I realized that I could commute easily. So I took the scholarship, it was a postdoc, 
for two years. And then, just by chance, uh, um, a position for assistant professor was, uh, was um, how to say, uh, was um, posted by the University of Bologna. And uh, I said, okay, why not? I I'm feeling really well in Bologna, and that's why. And then I started my academic career. And at that time, because uh, the assistant professor position in Italy at that time was a permanent position. And the permanent means that you are not fired, it's never you. And uh, now it, it's, it's not the same thing because the assistant professors are temporary position. But professorships are still permanent, and whatever we do. So we may decide, okay, we are forced to teach and to make exams, but uh, we may decide to do nothing more and we are not fired. And uh, this is a bit different with respect to other countries. And it has advantages and disadvantages, also in terms of the efficiency of the education process. But anyway, this is the situation. And uh, when I started, it was quite common in engineering that the university professors also did professional activity. Because, uh, you know, it was also thought like a plus uh, in the education process. If professors had practical experience, uh, it was uh, people were convinced that they could teach better and uh, in a more useful way. But uh, uh, there is to say that uh, at that time, precisely at that time, uh, the uh, boundary conditions started to change, uh, meaning that the uh, progress of the career of the professors uh, started to be conditioned by research productivity. It was a new situation in Italy. Because in the past it was not like that. The progress was just something, uh, I wouldn't say automatic, but more or less automatic. And uh, the minister in Italy started about 20 years ago to condition the progress, as I said, to research productivity and other indicators of productivity, like uh, um, amount of teaching, success of teaching in terms of the student's opinion, the start later, and etc. And also there is to say that they were still fascinated by research, by studying, let's say, because research seems to be a complicated activity, it's nothing more than studying, basically. You study a different kind of source, not textbooks, but uh, scientific papers, but it's studying. And I was still fascinated and therefore I decided to concentrate my activity on research. So today I cannot say that I am a professional engineer. I did some activity of professional engineering at the beginning of my career because, as I said, I needed some additional money. And, uh, but it was very limited. And uh, limited and, uh, mm, let's say, when I say limited, I mean limited in time and limited in terms of size uh, of the structure and infrastructures I cooperated to design. And there I stopped. I kept uh, consultancy activity, which means uh, it, it, it's carried out through the university. It often happens in engineering that public administration, individuals, uh, or engineering society ask for consultancy, ask the university for consultancy. And this is a kind of activity that I am still keeping. I like it a lot because it's a way to, to remain practical. And, and uh, you know, because otherwise research, uh, there is the risk in research that is uh, something not really applied and not really useful in practice. Instead, I believe that if a researcher keeps an eye on uh, the, you know, the needs of society, and you will see that uh, you will keep continuously an eye on these needs of society when teaching, I think it is useful because it allows you to better understand what the meaning of what you are studying, what you are researching. But uh, basically, I think it's important that you know that I cannot tell you how to manage construction works, uh, how to practically manage uh, uh, any kind of practical work. I can tell you how to design from a, a theoretical point of view, I can tell you I am informed about the recent progresses on research and this is what I can offer the best of my knowledge. On the other hand, as I said, practical works. Uh, I'm still, 
I'm even with no more entitled to put my signature on design projects and because in order to do that I should have attended some you know, additional courses on safety in construction places, etc., which I didn't take. And uh, the last thing that I think is useful that you know, I'm doing research in hydrology and water resources management. Now, in Italy, hydrology, water resources management are located in the same educational field as uh, ocean and coastal engineering. And uh, we call them Settore Scientifico Disciplinare in Italy, which means, uh, which means educational and scientific field. The ministry adopts these fields to classify educational and research activities. And as I said, hydrology, water resources management, post and ocean engineering are located in the same field. But main, my main expertise in terms of research is hydrology, water resources management, and flood analysis, surface water, rivers, etc. I started teaching coastal engineering because I am very fascinated by coastal engineering. I'm not really, I, I am not a researcher in coastal engineering and for this reason I try to limit my thesis on this field. Uh, but uh, I am very interested in coastal engineering, I am fascinated as I said and therefore I decided to also start teaching in coastal engineering and this is the third year. So it's, it's, uh, I think it is useful that you know that I started teaching, I have a 20 year experience in teaching, but my experience in coastal engineering was just three years. And I decided to start with a different, uh, you know, with a, a kind of a vision that I think it's, it's just a personal vision and I tell you what it is. Okay, so uh, that being said, let me now start giving details on this course. And first let me start with the practical details. We have 32 hours of teaching. I will teach for 20, 28 hours personally, and one day I call another person, that probably you already met her, her name is Gabriela Gaeta, and to do an exercise. Because as a part of teaching, I also carry out and do some exercises, about 6-8 hours of personal Everything what I'm saying, everything is explained here. Just let me get back to the PC. I'll show you my website. One second. This is my website. The web address is very simple. Alberto Montanari, that ID. And uh, this is missing the www, but you can use, it. You can use also www. Okay. And uh, you can also reach my website from uh, the University of Bologna website. No problem, there is the link. I decided to build a personal website where I put my teaching material because uh, the site of the University of Bologna is not very flexible and I wanted more flexibility to communicate also with the, student, uh, with the students. And this is why I decided to adopt my own website. It's open to the world. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted a uh, personal website. Because I wanted to make the educational material open access, fully open access for everybody. So you see here there are two columns, teaching and research. You concentrate on teaching. The first link is tutorials of coastal engineering. It may scroll down during the, I don't think so, but it may happen now with the first link. If it's not the first, you will find it later. And you may find here uh, the link of last year, you see, at the bottom, Coastal Engineering 2018. And this may be useful for you because it's an anticipation, even if it's not a copy, of what I do in the future. But let's now concentrate on this link. You click here, and here there is uh, an introduction where uh, there are all the details that I'm providing to you. So in principle, you don't need to take notes now. And uh, here there are also the lectures in the, the, These are the tutorial web pages. So let me give you an example. This is uh, an example of tutorial 
they are given in the form of web pages. So no PDF, no, uh, no printouts. Uh, and uh, why web pages? Because, uh, first of all, as I said, I want it to be open to everybody. If I give a PDF through the institutional repository, it's accessible only to students. And after you take your degree, it's not accessible to you anymore. So my aim is uh, to give you an information that is always accessible for you, even in 10 years from now, unless something very bad happens to me, because you know personal websites uh, may disappear. But uh, uh, given that I am just 53 and you're optimist, so this will remain available for you forever and evolving because every year I am integrating, adding something, etc. Another advantage of web pages is that they can use links. And uh, like, uh, for instance, here there is a link to Wind Waves, uh, and uh, if you click there, there is a, a link to Wikipedia explaining what is a Wind Wave. I like Wikipedia a lot, so 80% uh, of my links uh, are uh, referred to Wikipedia in English. So, using links, I think it's extremely powerful, and this is why I decided to use tutorials in the form of web pages. Okay, let me go back a little bit to our calendar. So, this is uh, the proposed calendar, or oh, let, me, let me explode it a little bit, it's too small. Okay, now I think it should be visible. Yeah, it's visible. And if you can see, please let me know. And can you read on the screen or is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can read. You can read. Okay, perfect. So this is the calendar, but uh, you know, I see that here there is a bit of a problem because I had, uh, I scheduled a uh, lecture on March 13 because I thought that it was uh, possible here. It's the Green Day. And in Bologna it's not possible to teach, I'm not allowed to teach in Bologna, but here I thought it was possible, but now they told me that uh, they prefer, they are closed, but I'm not sure if it was a preference, or they are... Anyway, let me, let me check, because there are two possibilities, either we are allowed to make lectures or not. If we are allowed, I would ask you, so like, uh, do you agree if we have lectures on March 13 or not, and if you agree, we may have it. And uh, otherwise, we have to cancel that one. And cancelling, uh, I don't really like it because I would like to finish as soon as possible, just to be on your behalf, on your, for your benefit. So I think May 15 is fine, even May 22 would be fine. But uh, anyway, if we have an opportunity to finish earlier, as soon as I finish, uh, I will uh, give you the opportunity to take the exam and tell you in one minute. So this is the proposed calendar for now. and. Uh, then after the break, I, I, I ask them for March 13, otherwise we'll find a solution. And uh, in all of these lectures, uh, I am supposed to teach from 10 to 2. Now, given the training timetable, I wanted to ask you whether you would agree in starting at 10.30 and then uh, uh, continue up to 12, 15 minutes break, and then 12, 15, 1.45.2, okay? In principle, it would be 12.50, 1.45, or let me say 1.45, 1.30, 1.45, okay? Let, let's see whether I can shorten the break. Let, let's say 1.45 for now, okay? And if you agree, I can use this uh, schedule. Everywhere, everyone is fine. Do we have lectures later? After, after, no. You don't have lectures on Wednesday afternoon, okay? Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so let's say that this is our timing. Usually I take only one break in four hours. Uh, if you want to take two breaks, uh, which means that uh, instead of one 15 minute break, we may take two five, 10 minute breaks, uh, just let me know. I am completely flexible. We could even take a longer break and stop at two. Just let me know if you prefer or two long breaks and stop at two. Let me know what you prefer, okay? Let, I assume that you agree with uh, 10.30, 12, 12.15, 1.45. If you don't agree, if you would like to make some changes, the only, the only condition is that you agree yourself and I'm flexible to adapt, okay? Okay, very good. And uh, now, um, let me see. 
because I don't want to forget anything. Okay. Now, um, as I said, I want to dedicate some time to exercises. So I will ask you, and I'll tell you one week earlier, to bring your PC with you, your laptop, and work on it. You could even work with two people on one laptop if you don't have the opportunity to bring a laptop with you. On the other hand, if you would like to work on your own laptop but you don't have one, let me know because I can lend you an old laptop. I could lend it to you or I could bring it to me every time I need it. Just let me know if you don't have this opportunity and we will solve it. Because, you know, I think in principle it would be better if you worked on your own PC instead of working with two people. Because otherwise two people, you know, there is one working, the other one looking at, and uh, unless you are very efficient in changing the roles, uh, it, it, it's not optimal. And uh, so if you agree with this, uh, uh, this uh, structure of uh, practical work, uh, I would ask you next week to bring your PC when we start with two hours uh, working uh, on the PC. So next week I make uh, two hours lecturing and two hours uh, starting uh, our exercises. Uh, exercises will focus uh, on uh, problems related to cost of engineering. I think we will be able to develop a couple of them. But, uh, and more important, they will focus on programming because I am convinced that uh, even in a context that is uh, full of opportunities uh, in terms of commercial and public domain software, I think that you still benefit a lot uh, from being able to uh, write programs uh, like MATLAB or whatever because it's an important skill. And uh, I, I know that it's also appreciated by, by employers, uh, by companies, uh, because, you know, one never knows. And once that you learn about the program, it's something that uh, you don't forget. It's like speaking a language, more or less. And uh, the program that I would like to use, uh, it's uh, not MATLAB, because MATLAB has disadvantage. It's not public domain is a commercial software. You can use it at the University of Bologna because we have a campus license. But still, if you go outside the university or you are no more a student, you can't use it. So, uh, you can use it outside until you are a student. But when you are no more a student, you cannot use it. And it's not really cheap to buy MATLAB. It's not like uh, Word, Excel that you buy them with 50 euros. MATLAB is, is expensive. So I prefer to give you an alternative, and the alternative is a software that is called R. You may already know it. Do you know R already? It's uh, very similar to MATLAB. And can I please ask you, raise your hand if you, if you used MATLAB before. Okay, so, okay, so, all, 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 let's say half of you. Okay. And uh, uh, you, are, you have already a knowledge of Excel more, correct? Everybody? Everybody. Okay, perfect. So, um, R and MATLAB are softwares that allows you to make programs. Also Excel allows you to make programs. Basically, the one that does that. But uh, the difference, uh, the main difference uh, between um, uh, electronic sheet like uh, Excel and uh, a program like MATLAB uh, is that uh, in MATLAB uh, you need to set up your own programs to run it. In Excel uh, you have already a pre-prepared platform. Of course there are several advantages because uh, if uh, a platform gives to you the opportunity to write a program it means that you can adapt the platform to your needs. And this is basically the skill that they would like to convey to you. Like you, you have a problem you learn how to solve the problem, but you also learn how to practically solve it and how to work on the PC for solving it. So, this I think is an important additional skill. 
So, no more details now on R, but uh, please, uh, next week, can with R already installed on your PC. And therefore, uh, I'll tell you how to do that. First of all, first of all, you go to this uh, um, site, www, just for what I'm writing here. I'm writing capital letters, you know that with the web addresses uh, shouldn't make any difference, capital or but in any case, I'm not really sure, so I use lowercase and uh, R www.r project with a dash. dash, not underscore dash, dot uh, I think it is org, but we will try just now. www.r project Org. Let's see. Yeah, here we are. So let me. Here we are. Now, you just have to go to download and uh, click on CRAN, which is a public domain repository. Okay, you get here. Again, let me. CRAN. But I go back. You just have to click here, CRAN, okay? From rproject.org, you click here. And then uh, here you have to select a cloud. It doesn't matter what you select. Usually I take the closest one, Austria. Just one second. It's a bit slow, okay. And then you have download R for Linux, Mac, Windows. Okay, let, let's click on Windows. You have to download the base. And uh, also if you read the instructions, uh, there is written, this is what you want to install R for the first time. So just base. If you click on base, uh, a download starts with a file. Here, download R for Windows, another click. So you get an exe, you save it, double click, and let it go. That's it. Okay? It's very simple. And then uh, don't try to start it. Don't try to work on it because it's already a bit, you enter a little bit in a more difficult task. Okay? So we, we can do it together. Let me go back. Now, here you see the three. Operating systems uh, Linux, Mac, Windows. I think you know what is Windows, what is Mac. I see a Windows there and a Mac there. Okay? I'm not sure. Does anyone of you use Linux? No. Okay. I give you an advice and uh, take your own PC, try to install a Linux operating system, and then it. This is my personal advice. Okay? Because uh, it's uh, a very good alternative to Windows and Mac and gives to you another skill. If you are a Linux user, it's something that you can put on your CD and uh, I tell you, it's great. I am a Linux user and I'm, I'm not using my own PC now. And uh, you may ask me, what is the advantage? So why do I need another operating system? Okay, the answer is very easy. First, you have two alternatives. If you reject Linux, you can select either Windows or Mac. They are commercial operating systems. They are cheap, but still commercial. Now, what is the difference between Windows and Mac? Mac is known for being more efficient with respect to Windows. So you may know that some people today say hey, um, Mac is definitely better than Windows. It's more efficient. What does it mean, more efficient? It means uh, that uh, it is less demanding for the machine. Less demanding means that your battery lasts longer. You have uh, the fan that is not working forever, which means that the computer works at a lower temperature which means that the hard disk, the motherboard, etc., they are less, less under pressure and they have a 
chance to last more. And uh, you know, there are statistics proving that our disc, the hard disk, for instance, with Mac, is uh, less exposed to failures. But I tell you, in terms of efficiency, duration of the battery, and time required for performing some tasks, definitely Mac is better. Also, there is an important difference between Mac and Windows. Windows is not designed to last longer. This is not the objective of the designer. To make a system that is uh, long-lasting, it's not the objective of the designer of uh, Microsoft Windows. They want to make a system that is up-to-date, offering very good performances when uh, it is released, but it's not conceived for lasting more. So, if you have an old PC, you cannot put on, on it the latest version of Windows, because usually after a couple of years, Windows uh, needs to be replaced uh, and needs uh, machines that are more advanced. Moreover, the efficiency of the system decreases very quickly with Windows. What does it mean? After a while, any computer, any operating system becomes slower because uh, of creation of new files, or etc. So any operating system decreases, uh, becomes older and decreases its performances with time. Windows is the champion, isn't it? After a couple of years, you need to reinstall it. I'm not sure if you experienced that. I tell you that I experienced it in the past. And the max duration, if the machine is used every day, must be used. It's about a couple of years, and then you need to restore it. Mac is more efficient. You can keep it for 10 years. It's no problem. So, one final thing. In the past, I'm not sure how it is now, Mac was less exposed to viruses. And uh, it, it, it even didn't use any antivirus up to some years ago. And this is a big advantage because with Windows you are exposed unless you use a very powerful anti antivirus and uh, um, uh, how to call it? Uh, there is another kind of I, I don't remember the name. And uh, I, I will, I will uh, a program that uh, is against viruses. It, it's a controller, a controller of tasks. I don't remember the name. Anyway, you need these programs running in the ground, and uh, this is another reason for the crisis, the decreasing the performances. So, I think I made it clear why Mac is better. Now, Linux. Linux has the same advantages of Mac. In fact, Linux users don't feel the need for using a Mac, for taking a Mac. And uh, with the advantage that Linux is free, it's open source, you can download it, install it on an old PC. Why I say, do I say an old PC? Because I just told you that it's a long-lasting operating system. So, moral of the story, I don't want to discuss and dedicate much time on this because it's not strictly related to this subject, but I give you this advice. Try, get an old PC, put Linux on and use it. Because, uh, you know, it's perfect. I mean, for an engineer it's perfect. I don't see any... The only problem is compatibility, but you can install compatibility with Word, Microsoft Word, or Excel, but you can install copies, and I don't go into the details. It's possible to get them running on Linux as well. That's it. Okay, so let's go back to our meet for the next week. Please get it installed over the Mac, over Windows, or over whatever. Okay, let's... Uh, Come back to the calendar of the lectures. So, now let's talk about, uh, I think for the lectures I said everything. Let's talk about the exam. And uh, first, keep in mind that this is a course with six credits. Four by me, two by Professor Archetti. Okay, now, uh, the exam is done in two separate dates uh, to give you the opportunity to prepare first my part and then uh, Professor Archetti, so or uh, the other way around, it's not a problem. And you decide. As for me, I give you the opportunity 
to take the exam as soon as the lectures are finished. And which means that, uh, you know that in principle I'm not allowed, allowed to register any exam before June 10, June 6, 7, I don't remember, the official closure date of the lectures. Uh, I cannot do any exam, exam before than that. So, in principle, I cannot register any exam, but if you agree, we can take an agreement that I allow you to take the exam, I call it a pre-exam, which means that I cannot register, but I write my paper, I take notes, and then I register later, at the first official exam date, okay? So, what you need is just to let me know, I tell you the dates of the pre-exam and the official exam dates, and I tell you when we get close, please do send me an email if you want to take the pre-exam. Pre-exam means that once that you took it, you are done, but it will be recorded later, okay? Keep in mind that this is a kind of flexibility that I give. I know that some of my colleagues don't do that and don't complain if they don't do that because uh, if I wanted to be very strict and formally correct, I shouldn't do that. I do that because I think it is useful for you. But of course, uh, if you don't want to take the pre-exam, you are not forced. And then, after the pre-exam, I will have an official exam basically the first day when I am allowed to do that and uh, it will be June 6, 7. And then I fix another exam end of June and another exam end of July, okay? Here you see that there is written that we will decide the dates in April. We may decide even before than that. After I checked with them about March 13, if uh, we can confirm this calendar, I can fix already now or next week the dates of the exams. Keep in mind that I can do. If for some reason a lecture is postponed, we need to postpone also the exam. Okay? Your question. Yeah. Uh, for what concerns the calendar, we have a problem uh, between the 27th and 29th of March. 